Hello! Today, we're going to be making a siphon pot of coffee. There's a lot of instructions available online, and uh, so far I've felt a lot of those are inadequate, and so I thought I'd give you guys a hand. Alright, so there's a couple of tricks that you want to pay attention to when you, when you try and do this. So, first of all, uh, the water's been preheated. I basically just use hot tap water. Um, the main idea is you don't want to use the cold water. Uh, it just takes a long time for the fuel to heat up uh, the water when you do that. So the ideal temperature here is about 190 degrees is what you want to try and hit. That's a little bit difficult for us normal people to get that measured. If you happen to have a, uh, a, ther a thermostat in the house, or I'm sorry, uh, if you happen to have a way to measure the uh, uh, thermometer, I believe is the term I'm looking for. Uh, in the house, then, of course, you could uh, make sure you have it at the right temperature, but uh, the other trick that you can do, I'm going to show you in a minute, and it basically has to do uh, with the next thing we need to talk about, which is the filter. So a lot of the uh, guides you're going to find uh, are not going to tell you about this little trick, and uh, I can tell you it was rather frustrating uh, not to have this one under control. So uh, we're using uh, a Japanese version of the siphon pot, uh, but I think most of them probably have this feature. Uh, the idea is this is the filter. Uh, and here is our, uh, and what we want to do, go ahead and drop that in there. Now, the most important thing here is there's a spring on there for a reason, and that reason is that we need to go ahead and attach the little hook onto the bottom, okay? And if you don't do this, you're going to get a lot of grounds back in your coffee, which is obviously not tasty. Now, I promised you there'd be a way to tell whether or not the water was hot enough, didn't I? So, what we want to take a look at there is basically you can go ahead and put this in. And you want to pay attention to the, the beads that are coming down off the chain here. And you're basically looking for uh, w the water to kind of bubble up around it. And when you're starting to see that happen on a fairly consistent basis, uh, your water's probably getting uh, close to the heat that we want it to be at. So we're going to continue to let the water heat here. And let's go ahead and get our beans set up. So uh, this morning we're using Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee. Uh, it's a very delicate uh, coffee, and so you don't want to overdo it on this particular one. Uh, the directions call for about 35 grams, or for us Americans, that's about an ounce and a quarter. And the and what we're trying to do here is basically uh, you don't want to mess up the 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 profile, the the flavor profile, of the coffee. The last one that we did, you know, I probably put in twice as much as the directions, which is what I usually do in a drip pot. Um, but here on the siphon, you want to be more careful. It's a, it's a little bit more. Uh, of a delicate process. So I'm going to go ahead and put in here what I think is probably hopefully about an ounce and a quarter and I'm going to go for uh, three I'm going to just do a little bit more there looks about right and uh, give it a quick shake looks alright to me and let's go ahead and do the test and see if we've gotten our water to the level we'd like it to be at Probably gonna have a hard time seeing that, but I believe we're getting fairly close to where we want to be here. I'm gonna give it just another kind of 30 seconds. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a blue bottle coffee near you, you can actually pick up one of these siphon pots from them. They've got extremely creative directions, uh, and a lot of what you're hearing today, I've, I've taken some of the tips uh, from there. Um, you know, I love the folks at Blue Bottle Coffee. I'll say these messages. <laughs> They're a little cryptic, which is odd for something that has this much text and pictures. Um, and there's uh, some, some interesting things they say here. For instance, in a moment when we go to um, uh, when we go to stir the pot, they actually say that we need to stir the pot in a, I believe it's a counterclockwise direction. And I'm not sure why that is, but the directions say so. Okay, so the water's actually a little bit too hot right now. I'm going to go ahead and dial it back here. And I'm going to go put this in and let's see what we've got. So, you know, I'm getting bubbles at this point. I'm not getting too many bubbles, so I think we're probably in good shape. All right, so the next thing is, uh, once your water's up to speed, you may or may not be able to see the steam that's coming off here, and the steam is, of course, what creates the, uh, the siphon effect. So, uh, obviously a very important piece of the puzzle. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in. I'm gonna tighten it down to make sure we've got a good uh, seal there. We don't want any of the steam escaping. That pressure is what's going to go ahead here in a minute and start to push the water up. And I don't know if you can see it yet, but the water has started to come up uh, into 
uh, the, the siphon pot up top. And I'm, as this happens, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a little push down so that we can get all the beans uh, into the water. And it looks like we've achieved that. The directions call for no more than a certain number of, of strokes, and again, always in the counterclockwise direction. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting the spin going. I'm just going to give it a good whip here and let it go. Now the goal is really, you're trying to get a dome on the top of this uh, siphon pot, which is a little bit difficult to get. I don't quite have one here. Um, but I think uh, as you continue to, to do this on a regular basis, uh, you would probably be able to do that with a, a fair amount of consistency. The uh, folks I see at, at Blue Bottle, uh, they can certainly do it. So we're just waiting for this last little bit of water to kind of scoop up. I'm going to see if I can add just a little bit of heat and push that the rest of the way up. And I think that's probably about the best we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And then there's a couple of things you can do. You can just go ahead and sit and wait for it to come back down. That kind of takes a moment, but as you're watching that, I'm going to go grab a cold towel uh, from inside the kitchen here. No need for the towel to be freezing cold, regular tap water will probably do the trick. And as you can see, the coffee has started to come down, and when we, when we apply the cold uh, rag or, or, or dishcloth here to the uh, pot, yeah, that obviously makes the air uh, condense, which is pulling down the, uh, the water, uh, the coffee at this point, uh, down from the pot. And so you can see that it's moving much more quickly now that we've applied the rag. I don't know why I keep calling it a rag, the dishwash, dish, uh, yeah, whatever, who cares. Okay, here we go, it has come down, you can see that things are looking good, we've got a nice frothy top to the uh, coffee which shows that it's nice and aerated and we're probably going to be able to smell a good profile off from uh, the nose on this pot of coffee. So, looks like we've gotten all of our coffee back in, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull the siphon pot off. And obviously be careful, the whole contraption is a little bit warm. And also made a glass. Alright, let's see here. Give it a little shake here, that should loosen it up. Uh, hmm. Don't have a trick for me when it gets up like that, but you could just throw it all over everything on the table. Okay, so we've got that squared away. We've got a cup of uh, a cup that I've warmed with hot water. Keeping the temperature of the coffee is important uh, because you want to get that first flavor profile uh, when it's nice and warm. As you know, you know when coffee gets colder, you have a tendency to change um, the flavor profile uh, as it changes temperature. So here we go. I like to give it a little extra pour there to aerate the coffee and bring some bubbles up to the top. It's just going to make it smell a little bit better in the nose, give you a better idea of what the flavor profile looks like. Mmm, now that is a tasty cup of coffee. Cheers, enjoy your siphon pot coffee. Mmm, delicious.